Lord Stephen Green of Hearst Pierpoint is well connected with Hong Kong's business community, having spent more than a decade here with HSBC Group. Those ties were apparent when he was welcomed back as UK Trade Minister for a luncheon organized by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council and the British Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. Last year in September, we organized a promotion in London entitled Think Asia, Think Hong Kong. And Stephen's uh, department gave us tremendous support. We brought forth as many as 2,000 UK companies to the various activities, promoting Hong Kong as the most effective gateway to penetrate the market in Asia, especially China. It feels like coming home. Coming home with a different hat on, um, although it is actually my third visit to Hong Kong since I took this job up. I hope that fact alone uh, underscores for you the importance that the British government attaches to the trade and investment relationship with Hong Kong. Investment uh, is uh, something that is crucial to driving our growth. We need to invest particularly in the public economic infrastructure of Britain. Britain's kindest friends wouldn't accuse it of having a world-class public economic infrastructure. Uh, and anybody who drives around Hong Kong for 25 minutes will uh, be immediately reminded of the difference between a really high-quality public economic infrastructure and the one that the British have. Lord Green's visit also builds on progress made in last year's Think Asia, Think Hong Kong, the largest event to date promoting Hong Kong services and how they can help UK companies. Lord Green, uh, in September at Think Asia, Think Hong Kong, you recast that old phrase, go west, young man, as you know, go east, young person. What sense do you get since that event and in general that UK companies are taking up that challenge and that advice? Well, I think they are. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I see this in the volume of business coming through UK trade and investments, most obviously. We're expanding the network in a number of Asian centers, India for one, mainland China for another, uh, and some others as well, Indonesia. Um, and we're doing so in response to demand. So I think it is clear that more and more British companies are looking at the opportunities eastwards. And long may that continue because we've got a long way to go on this journey. One of the most immediate opportunities, he said, was London's quest to become an offshore trading center for the Chinese currency. I believe that it makes every logical sense for the Chinese authorities to want to see a major renminbi trading center in the Western Hemisphere. And I certainly, you would expect me to argue, that London is the right place for it to be. Therefore, the agreement that was announced when George Osborne was last in Beijing is of real strategic significance. And I think that in times to come, you're going to see London emerge alongside Hong Kong in partnership with Hong Kong as a major center for the renminbi. We've already seen one renminbi bond, of course, issued by my former employer, Stuart, take a bow. And, uh, uh, and there will be many more to come, of course.